the PKK in Turkey has announced that it will begin to withdraw its fighters from southeastern Turkey to its bases in neighboring northern Iraq on May the 8th. Well, at least from May the 8th, the jailed leader of the PKK, Abdullah Erjalan, has recently called for the withdrawal. And this is being seen as a vital step to ending nearly three decades of conflict in which 40,000 people have been killed, including many civilians. However, the Kurdish fighters have not said that they will disarm as the Turkish government has been demanding. I've been joined here in the studio by my colleague Gune Yildiz from the BBC's Turkish service. So, Gune, this fact that uh, the Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan in Turkey has said he wants the PKK fighters to disarm. Is that going to become a bit of a stumbling block, an issue? It can be, but we can say uh, Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan has said some uh, contradictory, made uh, contradictory statements in the last couple of months. Uh, he was he started by saying that the Turkish army will not uh, conduct any operation against the retreating rebels, uh, but then uh, continued to say uh, when if the rebels remained armed, uh, the, the military will uh, conduct its role. But the PKK says uh, this is uh, the second step, the withdrawal step, and the uh, laying down of arms uh, will come at the end. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is quite a significant thing then, the fact that they said they're going to retreat to those bases in, in um, northern Iraq in the Kurdish autonomous region. What are they getting in return for this from the Turkish government? Actually, we don't know uh, that much about that, but we know that the Kurdish rebels are extremely loyal to their leader, Öcalan, despite he's been in jail for the, for the last 14 years. And uh, he's, uh, uh, they, they believe that there's, there will be something in it, in, in this deal for them. Uh, in the past, but most of what happened now uh, has happened in the, in the past uh, as well in 1999 when Öcalan made another call uh, for the rebels to withdraw to northern Iraq. But at that time it seemed like the process was going on unilaterally and Turkish army conducted operations killing 500, uh, more than 500 militants at that time. But this time it seems like there is, uh, uh, the Turkish government is responding to those uh, statements. I was there in Diyarbakir when the statement was made uh, by Öcalan. And I've uh, observed myself that the uh, approach of uh, Turkish police towards Kurdish protesters were so relaxed compared to past. Mm. So do you think then, Gune, that whatever happens from now on, this terrible conflict been going on since the mid-80s, thousands, tens of thousands are being killed, that whatever happens there will be a political solution to what's been called the Kurdish problem in Turkey? I think uh, th this is a very significant step, but it still uh, f falls short of a peace, uh, peace deal. So before a peace deal, we cannot be that certain that uh, there will be a return to violence. Uh, the, the, there were, uh, the Turkey was quite peaceful for five years when rebels withdrew to their bases, but they returned back, uh, claiming that the, the, their, the problems are still there, and they returned to violence again. And this time, uh, with the uh, regional uh, problems Turkey is facing in, in Syria and problems with Iraq and Iran, uh, it's a favorable time for Turkey to uh, have, a, have negotiations with uh, with re rebels, but uh, in the uh, in the future it might change. Thanks very much, Lee, for your analysis. Gunay Yildiz from the BBC's Turkish.